Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Product School webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, Product School teaches product management, coding, data analytics, and digital marketing classes at our 15 campuses around the world. On top of that, every week we offer some amazing local product management events and host online webinars, live streams, and Ask Me Anything sessions. Head over to productschool.com after this webinar to check them out. Today, we have an awesome guest presenting. I'd like to introduce you to Richa Rai. Richa is a leader in product management with more than 12 years of expertise in building strategy and roadmaps, defining business values, and delivering multi-million dollar products and programs. She is analytical at heart with an exceptional ability to bring order to chaos. Her bachelor's in engineering and master's in business provides a strong foundation for her to understand and analyze customer pain points, business drivers, and solution delivery. Feel free to leave any questions for Richa in the comments of Facebook, and I'll ask her them at the end. Without further ado, let's welcome Richa. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, hey, hi, Dan. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. <laughs> yeah, can, can you see me, though? Yep, I see you. And uh, okay. I don't see your screen share just yet, though. You don't see my screen share yet? OK, hold on. I think I had my, sorry about that. OK, I think we will be in business soon. I'm almost there. Cool. OK, oh, you see it now? Great, OK, take it away. Perfect. Yes, so let's get going. We have a lot to cover. And the topic uh, that I have chosen uh, for this webinar today is talking about product manager's toolbox. And it's a lot of content. Uh, I do this session in uh, two hours in a classroom setting. And I would try to, I have I've curated some of it. And I would try to, uh, if you see me cruising, just know that because I have a lot of content that I really want to share uh, with, uh, with awesome folks out there uh, that I am cruising through. But feel free to uh, leave your comments, questions, and I will get back uh, uh, to them. And uh, if not here, then uh, of course you can catch on LinkedIn and I can connect offline as well. So with that, let's dive into the agenda for today. We will be talking about the need for tools. Why do we need tools? Uh, art for building your custom toolbox. When we are thinking about toolbox or product managers, how you should be thinking about building your toolbox. What are some of the pointers for that? And tools from my toolbox, what are the tools that I have used over the years? And what are the tools that I, uh, what can I recommend or what, do, what their pros and cons are that I can talk to you about? Uh, and then uh, last but not the least is setting product managers up for success. What are those, how can we harvest and grow skills that cannot be replaced, replaced by tools? Equally important, we have to continue to grow ourselves uh, as uh, product managers and what are some of the things that we can continue to do that way. The need for tools, why do we need tools? Uh, this was one of the best way I found pictures speak louder than words. And this is the picture that I thought would convey the sentiment that why do we, why as product managers, we need tools. And this is one of the reasons we need tools because tools are a means to an end. They help us get our job done effectively and efficiently. We, there are tools, post-it notes are tools, uh, projectors are tools, PowerPoint is tools. And from there to all these cloud-based mobile and apps and, um, uh, and web-based, there are subscription-based new tools out there as well. So there is a broad spectrum of tools and we need tools because we can get our job done effect. Sorry, I was just setting up my screen a little bit. So 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 that so that's a means to an end. I think of product managers as handymans. We have to have all our tools in our arsenal uh, from a hammer to a flashlight to all the power tools and depending upon uh, and when we talk about the next agenda is what are those some of the key criteria when we are thinking about the toolbox. Uh, so based on what the situation is, what kind of projects we are doing, what are the resources, what in what company are we in, uh, what the, the uh, surrounding is like. And based on that, we should be able to pick up our, um, our tool or build our custom toolbox for that, for that purpose, for those needs. So art of building your custom toolbox, what are the tools that would work for you for and for your company and for your customer needs? So when we think about that, it depends upon a lot of different criteria. Type of project, 
Is it a software? Is it a hardware? Is it a chip company? Is it a company that's building IOTs? Is it a telecommunication company? Is it a small project internal? Is it large interdepartmental or across the organization? What kind of project is that? So your tool, tool set would depend a lot upon the type of you are working on. Level of team's expertise, how your team for a tool, when you're selecting a tool, if your team is going to work on that tool and it's a collaborative tool, is there how expert your team is? Is that a team where you need more tools that are uh, more intuitive and uh, they're for beginners and you can more drag and drop and a lot of features are built in which you can customize on the fly and it just uh, fills you in or your team has expertise and you, you have developers and you have coders on the team who can make the custom custom uh, some tools in it and sub tools in it or you can they can write scripts and they can create some of the custom nuances in, 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 a, in a more free setting tool. So it depends upon the level of team's expertise. Budget, what kind of budget your company has? I have worked in smaller companies, I have worked in enterprises and I've worked in companies where budget was never an issue. So depending upon how much the appetite is there for your company, uh, that also determines the, the kind of tool that you can use. A security, what uh, the, the kind of company you work in, the kind of environment, how much that company is willing, to um, uh, share data and based on what kind of data it is, uh, can you share it on third party with th third party or is it or is it customer data? Is it internal data? Is, are they sensitive about it? Uh, so based on that, I work in a healthcare organization today and that they, there are a lot of uh, compliance regulations. We can't have post a lot of data on third party servers. So for a lot of security reasons, we have to keep everything in-house. When I worked at Microsoft, I was at Microsoft, that's the, Microsoft, a lot of their tools were internal and a lot of their, and also it made, it was more efficient and effective for the scale that the, that the, that the organization was using tools to keep all the, most of the tools internal or even build the tools internal. It was more cost effective that way as well. So, so that, so it was budget and security both. Resources. Do you have resources in-house who can um, establish or customize a tool that you take a subscription of or you build a tool in-house? Would you have resources at hand who can make it uh, more custom for your own purposes or needs? Or do you need a consultation? You need to uh, work with another company who can come in and establish the expertise. First, not just customize the tool for your team, but also establish the expertise. Train your folks, train your team to on the usability of that tool. Capacity. Is it small? Do you need a, the tool that is for a smaller need or do you need to scale that tool over time? Right now you're just piloting it within your just even if you are in a team that in a very smaller setting, but over time you want that you would like that tool to be broadly used across the organization. So would you, how do you want to think about scaling that tool over time? So that is also an important factor. Would that tool be able to scale as you think about scaling that? Audience, who are your audience that you need to use these tools for or with? Are these only for internal meetings or just when you are doing a, a small brainstorming with business or is it with customers? How are How is your team or even organization open to experimentation? Every day there are new tools that are coming in the market and they are all very, and coming with new features and, and even for a very small niche, not a, Excuse me, the tools not today are mostly that cut across and they do everything. It's not uh, it's not just everything in one, but the tools that are coming in are more um, are more flexible and for one per one segment and they just solve one niche. But reliability is uh, because they're so new and they are also experimenting. It's hard to say if they are going to be there two years down the road. So how open your organization is for experimentation because that also some that is something that I recommend if your team is open for that. Then experiment with those tools. A lot of times those tools offer uh, early adopters free subscriptions and your for your feedback. And also you get to learn a lot with them, from them uh, for your business processes. So those are some of the very high level pointers when you are thinking about building your custom toolbox there is a lot more that goes uh, when you are when you're thinking about that with that moving on to our third and 
the most uh, meaty topic for today is tools from my toolbox. And how I have structured this section is I've created a one pager that has all the tools, but we'll go through one tool after the other, but it's more like a product's life cycle. So tools that start starting from the, the seed, when you start thinking how the ideation of a product happens to the delivery. And what are those tools along the way that help a product manager when you're thinking about delivering that product? That is how I have structured this section. And we will go through that one after the other. And we'll be talking about the tools that I have used. And uh, if I have any tip or note or what my um, uh, feedback is for that tool. So first we'll be talking about stra strategic roadmap. Strategic roadmap is a visual representation of aligning initiatives with business goals and timeline. The tool that I have used so far and I really like is AHA. Uh, when I was on Microsoft, we had our own custom tools that we used for strategic roadmap. Uh, and uh, mostly it was PowerPoint. It was nothing more than that. But um, after, uh, because there were also teams that were, that did mostly saw it through, like there was a strategy team and then they built strategy and then it, flow to different teams, to the delivery team, to the product team, to the delivery team, and so on and so forth. But in, a, in different setting, in a smaller companies or in where there is more cohesive culture, for example, I work on projects starting from strategy to, con to conception of the, of the product, to the delivery, not necessarily day-to-day -day delivery. We have tech PMs, uh, who uh, look after the day-to-day -day delivery uh, and incident support. So going live and then the operation and incident support. So I'm more, I'm in my current role, I oversee all of that across. And this tool helps me a lot because this is a tool where I can set up product vision and strategy. I can map business goals to the vision. I can generate Epic and then create feature backlog. And then because of the integration with Jira, all of this flows in Jira automatically and I don't have to manually go and do all the that work again or my functional analyst doesn't have to do all of that work again. So what I have, what, but what works best, what has worked for me best in the past is when I'm thinking about creating roadmap, I first do that with sticky notes, with PowerPoint, not even going to the PowerPoint, first using whiteboard, white sticky notes and whiteboard and getting to one final view and vision of what does that roadmap look like? And then putting it in a software when it is more solidified. When we, of course, it's an open, uh, open document. We continue to change and evolve as our thinking changes over time. But for the fin initial fresh start, the first, all of this is the tools that are used to first solidify all of this are mostly whiteboards and sticky notes. And after that, it moves on to live in, uh, in, uh, in any tool from where it is dragged and changes and versioning and all of that happens over time. So this is an example of the, of the strategic roadmap. I don't have time, but I would have preferred to go a little bit deeper in this, but strategy road, and all of these topics are like a half hour webinar topic in itself, talking about the strategy and roadmap. It is such a core component for a product manager when you're thinking about any product. And what is it that we are trying to solve? What the so strategy defines that what at a high level, what your company is after, what are the key strategic goals for your companies are, and how your product, how you should be thinking of first, why you should be thinking about your product. So the product should align to the one of the strategies. It should be turning on or should be an enabler for one of the strategies. And then secondly, what are the, when you're thinking about prioritization and feature sets, then strategy defines that a lot is what is it that we sh that I should be going after? If I turn on this feature, if, if increasing revenue is one of our strategy for this year. Then if I turn on this feature, this is going to increase revenue. But if I turn on uh, turn on other features, then it's more like customer satisfaction and delighting the customer and all of that. But that has to take a back seat because strategy for us is uh, to increase revenue. And what are those features that would help me meet that our, all over, our company's overall goal? And that defines the, the features for your product. So it is you know, strategy and roadmap in itself is a, huge topic to cover, but I'm just cruising through this and talking briefly about it. So moving on to the second um, tool that is that almost follows in that journey of a product uh, is customer journey mapping. As you think about the product, you start thinking about that how your customer is going to interact with, this is something very new 
in product management, but this something is extremely critical also. A lot of times we think about this as after the fact, but as a product manager, we should always be thinking when, even before we start thinking about features of our product is how our customer is going to interact with that product. Like thinking about their touch and feel and what kind of emotions they want to feel with that product, how and where in that customer journey they are going to interact with that product. So kind of doing that customer journey mapping and then thinking about, okay, then what are the areas that we need to make sure that as we are developing this product, we cover so that we can keep that customer journey as smooth and as delightful as possible for our customers. So customer journey mapping is something very new, but very core to uh, any product manager. And that's how any product manager should be thinking about when they're developing their product. So this is Again, something that you don't have to use a tool for, uh, but depending upon, you can experiment. I have used PowerPoint for customer journey mapping and I have also seen tools around. So it depends. I've, what I have done mostly is got my team together. We have brainstormed. We have used mostly post-its and markers to create that customer journey mapping, uh, moving it around, drawing phases and swim lanes, uh, the vertical swim lanes. Uh, on the on whiteboard and then moving those posters around and before landing on one of the customer journeys that okay for this product this is how the customer journey is going to be and what are those frictions what are those barriers and what do we need to break here uh, and also what, how once you have reached on that customer journey mapping view what it ha what it has been very helpful in is making my a lot of my extended team understand who are behind the scenes who are not who are not really in front of the business or who are not really in front of um, those strategic, uh, who do not have the view of strategy and who do not have the view of at the, at the strategic level, at the leadership level. It's very helpful in having them understand that, hey, this is how you are impacting a customer. This is customer goes from here, here, here until the customer makes a payment or gives us reviews or writes about us on social media. This is how your piece here helps in, in that end goal. So this is very helpful that uh, to understand their role in that life cycle of a customer. This is one of the PowerPoint that says there are different categories. Uh, those are the different verticals where uh, of different phases of a customer and how in each phase that customer is interacting with any product, it's just an example. Third is wireframe mockups and prototypes. So once we have established what do we want to build and how that, uh, how, what the feature set should look like the first the industry is moving towards an, a stage where we quickly before even we have started writing a code everybody wants to get visual everybody even our stake for our stakeholder validation for any work that we do a lot even getting buy-in for internal teams making our teams understand uh, development teams understand hey what are we trying to achieve the goal now has become a primarily uh, and because i work in a web and mobile world a lot now is to go visual is to create something visual put it in front of our customers for our stakeholder validation and create like even even when we're thinking about a b kind of uh, views Okay, this is how A view would look, and this is how B view would look. And so wireframe mockups and prototypes have become extremely in, in important too. And a lot of, and RV have visual designers and in-house. So not necessarily that I, uh, I work in a company uh, and uh, in an organization where I have those resources who are SMEs in, the, in using these tools and they are the ones who create. I, I work very closely with them. I kind of give the brain dump and work with them to create those. But in a lot of companies and in smaller companies, there, there may not be a different roles. And as a product manager, and I have been in an organization where it's a very small company and I am the visual designer or graphic designer and everything. So, and I have, so for wireframes and when you're doing even mockups, you don't need any uh, specific tools if you don't have, you can always do whiteboarding and you don't have to be very specific. It's just a visual representation of whatever team has discussed, what you want to achieve. When you're creating a uh, prototype, yes, you need something a little bit more uh, that, because it is visually look and feel and spec wise in that way. So you need a little bit more expertise, but nothing that you can't uh, learn in visual is also a tool which is very widely popular for prototyping and um, it can be used very easily. Um, there are this, this is an example of like a wireframe that you can just draw and then a mock-up that looks a little bit more color and, and your branding and, and a little bit more look and feel to it. And prototypes are more like click tools. So the tool helps you 
put it in the in the in the web view or in the mobile view so you can quickly write the code change the code also and you can just hit uh, send and it just changes the code real time and you can see, see the change real time in your uh, a mobile app or in your website. So those are the kind of prototyping tools that are available today that you can leverage. That makes you really efficient and that makes you take your story to your st stakeholders for real-time validation. Hey, this is what we are building. And from all the discussion that has happened before, you have already gone and invested a lot of, invested a lot of time of your team in building something for real. Then it is product ma backlog management. So once you know, okay, this is what you need to deliver, this is how you've logged on the design, and now we have to start building the code for this. Then how do you do a product backlog? What, what do you do with a product backlog? So product backlog is a place where you add, adjust, groom, prioritize all of your features and user stories. So what do you want to deliver first? What comes after? How do you stack them? How do you first group them, stack them? What I have done in the past is, uh, and has uh, worked in my world is uh, first grouping them. Must need, there are like three categories. A most needed, um, most mm, must need, and then there are three categories. And then you first group them in these three categories and then you stack them based on most needed. These are the must have, I don't know, I'm just spacing out right now. So those three categories, and then you stack them on, on that and you involve your business partners, you all involve your engineering teams and based on your business goals and based on your the complexity of that engineering team uh, shares with you that hey, this, this feature maybe is more, more would be more uh, would be more efficient if we delivered after this because this is how technically it makes more sense so kind of and the business wise yes of course their input input is most important is hey we want these features upstream or ahead of these and as a product manager basically your job is to bring a lot of these key stakeholders in the room and influence and guide and and make sure that all of those decisions are captured and you deliver um based on their based on what the team's input is and different stakeholders have their own uh, input is is um, their input is um, their input is um, valued uh, must have should have and nice to have so must have is you can do without you can turn on should have because they would achieve some of your business goals and nice to have are the long tail they're, they're features that will delight your customers they don't really expect it but if you give it to them then they are going to expect thank god it came back to me i was facing it i wasn't really sure if it, but so this is and this is the this this is what i live and breathe and this is the world this is the world of product manager so i'm surprised that's happening to me so those are the those are the three uh, and that's how you prioritize them as you sort them in these three categories and then you stack rank them so this is one of the uh, we have uh, used tfs a lot and um, and in, at microsoft and this is how it is it is an example how it is in the, in, in tfs uh, the, they are prioritized so that was the methodology for prioritization that I just talked about. And uh, th there is this um, Moscow model and Moscow is must have, should have some, something. It's an could have and won't have. It's an acronym for this, uh, for Moscow. And this is how you, you define your priority list. And this is a visual of must do, should do, could do, must have, should have, nice to have. Uh, this is how we had. And so you group them, different features in, in those three categories, and then I have stack rank them that way. Sprint planning and tracking agile projects. After you have decided what you want to deliver, your deliver delivery team goes into uh, delivering those features. You still want to keep a tight eye a close and a close connection with your delivery team on how they are doing, how the sprint planning is coming along. You want to be involved in uh, up to a level, like the kick of the sprint planning. You don't want to meet with your engineers or delivery team or leads every day, but you still want to be involved and engaged in the sprint demos and what they're delivering. 
and and how they are delivering and if there are any roadblocks that they're going to hit if there are any technical if they have any business uh, decisions or confusion that they want business clarity on or if they're getting roadblock due to different dependency on upstream and downstream technical teams or any other team then you have to be uh, tightly um, uh, in in a tight in a tight contact with them so that you can resolve those roadblocks and get those get the product delivery schedule on time or meet that schedule so um, how what do you do in those sprint planning and tracking the project that's in an agile way is estimate stories what whatever story user stories that you have defined to deliver in any in, overall i guess it's that part of that engineering planning that they get together and they estimate all those stories that's how they estimate how much work how much time would they need to deliver that product overall so they estimate their stock so you you need a tool where that the team establishes the sto stories they team establish team velocity how many members are their team are in the team front end developers back end developers java coders a database analyst testers uh, devops folks and what is their capacity for release and what does the release schedule looks like and when can they so based on that so they establish a team velocity they prioritize user stories that we have to deliver all of these user stories, which was and what we should be going to and assign tasks for the sprint. And then they create tasks for those user stories and then they distribute their work. So you need a tool that helps in doing all of that work, that agile project management. I have used again for our whole our, um, uh, engineering teams have used TFS in the, in the past. In my current company, they uh, recently transitioned to Jira and I'm hearing good feedback. I haven't personally invested a lot of time in it, but I'm hearing excellent feedback from the delivery teams that they, they are using Jira now and they love the experience. Uh, what I really like in TFS also, we used Kanban board a lot to track non-developmental tasks where the tasks were put on the Kanban board like a postage and they were moved around and based on whoever was ready to take them on, they would just take them on. So that was a very neat feature. I really loved that. And also uh, the way it was presented, the way it was questionable uh, was also very neat. So, so that I really liked about that. So this is an example of the sprint planning and tracking. So how do you, how do you go ahead and do those uh, sprint planning? So in, in you go to into the tool and where you have this epic feature user story task issues, and then you also track your bugs and bugs are also then turning into tasks. This is how the this is an example uh, where it shows the name of the person who the task has been assigned to, and then the work. This is the team capacity velocity or uh, that this is the remaining work, the story points. So these are the story points of the rem remaining work. This is where they are. So the visual representation of this is amazing. One of the key uh, also components of product manager is to gather feedback. As you are thinking about new products, as you're thinking about new features in your product, that how do you collect feedback from different sources and how do you manage that feedback? So this is another one of the areas that gets oversight but another very important very core to a product manager's life where a lot of noise takes over and being a in a product management function role myself i understand how noise cuts through but but this is this is from where everything starts you have to continue to keep your focus on uh that i have to collect feedback and it unless you establish a way the way uh, it gets it can get very messy and it's, it's, it's a very crowded space because you're getting feedback from your business, from your customers, from your vendors, from your partners, uh, from uh, different uh, cust customers from uh, on different uh, platforms, on different sources, on social media, on if you have a customer service, they're calling customer service. If you have an email platform, then they're emailing and chat. So it, it is a very busy, crowded space. So you need to establish a, a method by which you are hearing all of these feedback and also you are turning it into some action uh, and that's where tool is very helpful because it gets crowded and user voice is one of the tool where you can collect all this feedback that's coming from different sources and then you can develop them into actionable actions uh, where you can then drive change and, and and improve user experience the another uh, key component of a product manager is analytics, making sure that you are and analytics is not uh, is not just tracking, but also analytics. The major component of analytics is uh, tracking the business value. What are those key metrics that you should be tracking 
that would help you determine how your product is doing in the market. So it is very important that you, you put proper tags at proper uh, inflection points where you want, where you would get the result that you really want. So measuring, analyzing, and reporting insights of activity on web and mobile is what, analy is what, the analy is what analytics does. And uh, so you have to, I'm just looking at time too. So they're about time. Um, okay, so I'll keep going and uh, hopefully I'll be able to wrap this up in the next five minutes. Mm, so, so that is why analytics is a big piece and not just tagging just the navigation on the page or whatever, because I'm from the web world, web and mobile. So, uh, but a lot of times uh, it has become afterthought too. Uh, and but this has to come in the culture is as you roll out these products, as you roll out these services, that you want to measure the business value. And if it is driving the right behavior that you want, and if it is not, then you want to know that too. whatever can be measured can be changed. You want to measure it so that you can change it. And there are different tools. We here currently the the direction is using Adobe tags. I haven't personally seen the benefit or the differentiation factor from. Google Analytics or uh, we use for analysis Power BI in the past and Microsoft. So I'm yet to, I haven't yet seen the benefit of Adobe Tag, but that's also another analytics uh, way of uh, web and mobile, uh, mobile, mobile analytics that is being used. And then methodology for readiness and landing. Another extremely overlooked, not a lot of time, but yes, a lot of times gets overlooked because as a product manager, we get fixated on building the product right but <laughs> what is also more important or maybe equally important uh, is getting the product uh, uh, in uh, to a market where they are ready for that change so me doing that change management for our audience for our customers is that they are they know about the change that's coming they know about the new product that's coming what are the benefits of that you have prepared them really well so a lot of factors that are involved in doing that effective change management and as a product manager it's important to work very closely with your marketing team with your teams around you to create that kind of content with that messaging is uh, that will prepare your audience to to accept the change and the model that i have followed in the past is ad car model it's called awareness, awareness, desire, knowledge, action, and reinforcement. So those what those five things are at a very high level is first you make your target audience aware about the change that it's coming. Then you create desire in them. Uh, and then you provide them knowledge. How can they access? So, and these are the different communication that you build a, a calendar for that with these with these medium with these channels or with these uh, artifacts, I'm going to address this area. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to send a newsletter out, making them aware. For desire, I'm going to do run some more campaigns. For knowledge, I'm going to send them this link uh, and with all this facts and help document and videos. And then on the day boom of launch that, hey, this is the action, uh, We this was coming and now today is the day and you go and you can access this, you can buy this, you can use this. And, you let us know your feedback and reinforcement that going to them after that and asking asking them for the um, uh, for kind of reconveying that message hey we launched this 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 was what we were hoping and uh, let us know what your feedback is if you haven't tried it please try if not so that's the reinforcement message is so this, so this is the model that I have passed, but something that is very important as a product manager to be very sincere about and plan for readiness and landing as you are thinking about, as you all think about building the product. Right product is important, but right readiness and landing of that product is equally important because it can totally make or break your product if the readiness and to totally not fault of a, pro of a product. Product could be perfectly fine, uh, but if you haven't prepared your market in the right way, it's not, it might just fall flat and without, uh, and all of that hard work of the, not just the product manager, but the team hard work uh, goes for nothing. So with that, we come to the last topic and the last agenda item that is setting product managers up for success, for long-term success. So beyond toolbox, what are those skills that are critical for a successful, to be a successful product manager? And I think product managers need to be hustler. Like you have to hustle always. Think about the ways you can push the wall, push the limit 
um, or get something that you need in the time that you need because you're always crushed either for time or resources or, or getting some answers from your leadership, from your business partners. So you have to, hus- as a product manager, you have to hustle a lot and you have to continue to nurture that um, in you. Scrappy, as a product manager, it doesn't matter you are in a small company or a big company, but you have you will never have enough resources that are required uh, to deliver any uh, product uh, to your liking, to the liking that how you want to deliver in time. So it is very important for you to get scrappy, how do we get creative? In smaller companies, you always have, are at, um, at, you need resources, you don't have enough resources. Uh, the budget is tight in bigger companies by the time the funding or the, the channels that you have to go through or the hoops that you have to jump to get funding is always far too long far too complicated and in that time you would have missed your timeline anyway so you have to get scrappy one way or the other a uh, curious you have to be very curious you when you are working building a product you have to ask a lot of questions you should open you should be open to asking a lot of questions around you with folks who are SMEs in their areas and also folks who are not uh, SMEs, but who are pr- probably potential personas as a user of your product. So always be very curious, always keep asking questions. Open mind, you work with so many other people, so many different teams and uh, keeping an open mind, it's very um, easy for a product manager to get uh, emotionally attached to their products. They have all. They have thought about it. They have been very close to it. They have um, probably thought about incorporating everything that they needed to in the product. But when things, uh, there are ideas and their suggestions, and hey, we can do it this way. Let's talk, talk about doing it. So there are lots of opinions that come in. And at point of time, at one point of time, there you might feel like it's too many cooks in the kitchen. So it's a time where you have to keep an open mind and everybody's opinion is valued. That's how you have to think about it. And the bigger goal is that the goal is to develop a product that meets the strategy of this company. That's the most important paramount importance for everybody that there is no ego, there is no personal connection. This is for that bigger goal of delivering something that is best for our customers and meets our company's goals. Building credibility. You work with so many people, with so many other teams who are in your management, who are outside of your management. It's very important to build a trust, uh, a trusting relationship with folks around you so that you they, they feel confident in following you. They feel that, hey, this is the leader I can put myself behind. I, I trust what this leader is saying. I trust what this leader is doing. I trust what that person is trying to build. And I am confidently, I can put myself or folks on my team behind this person uh, because I am sure something, something of uh, importance for our customers or for our company will come out of this. That's the kind of credibility you need to build with folks around you. Staying focused as a product manager, when you're thinking about delivering a product, there is only so much you can do in the time that you always get, uh, that you have to keep yourself focused. There will always be things that you won't be able to deliver 100%, but you have to chunk it out, phase it out, and keep the focus there that, hey, the more important, most important goal is getting in front of the customer as early as possible, uh, with whatever the minimum required set of MVP is, that's what my goal is, and I'm not going to get uh, defocused from that path. Now, risk taker, that things are not 100% sure. A lot of times when we are even, as a product manager, when we are stepping out and thinking about the products or the features in the product, we have to take make the decision based a lot on our gut. We don't have all the data, all the information going in and we're thinking about that those decisions. So we have to get comfortable with taking risk and we have to make our management comfortable with taking risk. Uh, we have to coach them, guide them that if we were to wait really long to collect all the information to all the kind of tests and all of that early on so that when we are 100% confident, oh, this is a sure bet, by that time it would be too late. For us to get to the market so it is okay based on cut based on some preliminary data from the trends that we're saying seeing we can take that risk and move forward learning something new continue to learn something new you guys are here attending this webinar this shows that you have the curiosity you're here to learn something new continue to learn something new go out with somebody who's new who has a new function on your 
team or company you don't know that about and just take that person out for a coffee to sit down and talk about, hey, what do you do? What do you, what does your role look like? And what are your challenges? You know, getting to know that person or their role a little bit more. So learning something new about somebody. Giving back to community. I, the way I do it is I, I do these webinars, I do these sessions, I, I talk to a lot of aspiring product managers or folks who want to know more about product managers, this is my way of giving back to community and every time I do this, I walk away learning more, and uh, that also keeps an open mind that gives you a very different perspective. Every time somebody asks me a question and more often than not, uh, two out of 10 times, the question is like, hey, I think I'll have to think a little bit more about that and I'll get back to you. And that's where my growth, most of my growth happens. So I always recommend for you guys to men be a mentor to somebody. There's always somebody who's who's uh, looking to learn something that you know. Uh, feel free to, to, to find that person and give something back to that, to the person, to the community. And be patient, continue to do the right thing and you'll see yourself maturing over time. It doesn't happen uh, overnight. And you, a lot of times you do uh, things, uh, you will get in trouble, uh, but that's fine. That's how you grow. That's how you learn. And that's how maturity will happen over time. And also there are other resources uh, that are for product managers that I really like. I haven't, read, I haven't read all these books myself. These are my wish list or my, my reading list uh, also but I have read few of them. Uh, I have read Bill Walsh, The Score Takes Care of Itself. I highly recommend that book. I am currently reading The Lean Startup uh, right now, but I want to get to all these books, but, and these are excellent resources for product managers. So keep yourself, um, uh, whenever you have any free time, uh, please read uh, as much, get access, as much access you can get to those product management resources because product management is a function again it's a very different you need perspective from different angles and there are and it's it, and that's it's it's not one mundane topic which is very interesting about the product management different fires to fight every day different battles to fight every day and all these books are so diverse in nature and in topic and yet they are so integral for a product manager so when you read them it's it, it's um, uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting because it's not just one topic that you're reading over and over again. It's a different topic altogether. And then the takeaway, as I was saying, you need to be patient. As much you may read, as much you may learn, as much you have the right tools, as much you have grown yourself and read all the books out there on product management. Don't be, be beat yourself up. Whatever you will plan is going to be very different from the reality. And that's where the growth is. So be confident that even though things didn't go right as you planned, but you have learned something that now you can apply next time. So that is the growth that has happened. And that makes you mature over time. With that, thank you so much uh, to Product School and to the uh, awesome community of aspiring product managers. Thank you so much for coming out and hearing me here. Uh, it was rushed, it was quick. But uh, I wanted to cover this with you all, but here is my email and here is my LinkedIn account as well. So feel free to reach out. I'm happy to answer questions for you, happy to get on a call with you or brainstorm with you. Whatever you are doing, uh, I can, I'm happy to partner with you in whatever way uh, I can help. Thank you so much for that awesome presentation. That was great. Really enjoyed that. So um, I do have a quick question for you. There's a, it's a two part question actually. Mm -hmm. So how do you determine the priorities on the strategic roadmap? So determining the priorities on the strategic roadmap is um, based on what our leadership, uh, so it's, it's a very, it's a strategic priority on the, on the, priority on the strategic roadmap is a very a leadership driven uh, ask. Uh, it depends on what our leadership, what the strategic priorities for our leadership are. I work in a healthcare company and we have very different, uh, uh, the strategic priorities are determined by leadership that we have to make sure that we are compliant to these regulations. We have to make sure that we are taking care of our new me Medicaid members or, or such. So based on those strategic priorities, whatever we decide, whatever there are, we have a list of projects or products that we would want to roll out. But these are the strategic, these are the five strategic priorities for our business and which ones align 
or which are the which are in direct or indirect alignment with those strategic priorities where we are turning those priorities on those are the ones that take precedence automatically so those are so we have to map one on one with those strategic priorities hey this is the work that if we deliver it right then this is th these are the strategic priorities for our company or our organization are going to be met so if they need 5% of this, and if we turn this feature on, then at least 1% of our member will meet this. So their 5%, 1% goal from that 5% will be met by doing this work. So this is how, so this is the prioritization is in direct relation with the strategy that our leadership has decided. Interesting, okay. So this, you might've just answered the second part to this question then. How do you balance long-term and short-term goals on the roadmap? Are there any guidelines? So generally, they so that is what a leadership does too. So this is the job of the leadership. They have vision. That is a short-term vision. This is our short-term goal. And they have a long-term vision. This is our three to five-year roadmap. This is where we want to go. We want to beat competition or we want to be on cloud. All our application needs to be on cloud in five years or all our, we should have at least five new subsidiaries in the next five years. And in short-term goal is that, hey, we have to accomplish these different things. So this is this is the part where leadership has access to a lot more broader landscape uh, what is going around us uh, at, uh, at 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 the at, at the company level at our product level and also from the competition from where they want from what their vision and where their vision has been for the company uh, so they define the long term and short term and that governs the work that you deliver as a product manager awesome Okay, so that wraps up uh, the questions. There aren't any other questions here. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. A bunch of people are saying thank you. So um, before we go, I just wanted to give you all some more information on product schools, upcoming courses and events. So you guys have the resources to become a product manager. Um, our product management, coding, data analytics, and digital marketing courses are taught by industry experts working at companies like Google and Facebook. In addition to that, we offer weekly online and on-site events at our 15 campuses in the US, UK, and Canada. So uh, if you're located near a campus, make sure you stop by one of our weekly events. You can also find us on social media at Product School, and be sure to keep up with the latest product management content at the product blog at productschool.com. So thank you all for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope to see you next week. Thank you so much, Reach. Have a great night or afternoon. <laughs>